Hey you all, welcome to this Patristic Nectar's film. Uh, our subject today is Orthodox Dating 101, and it's appropriate since it's the eve of Valentine's Day and love is in the air, so to speak. What exactly is the traditional Christian way to date, and does it line up at all with uh, the post-1960s, post-sexual revolution practices of our own time? In fact, it doesn't. Modern dating methods are a recipe for human misery, for broken hearts, and disaster. Uh, there are two lines to follow very closely. The rise of uh, contemporary, autonomous, I'm an island, uh, let's play married before we're married dating, and the rise of divorce. Those two parallel each other very closely. In fact, Modern dating has led to the destruction of marriage, such that now in the United States, marriage is not normative. Less than 50% of American homes uh, have married couples in them. Misery, misery, misery. Forgot about it. Forget about it. There's a much better way. And there's no better time to think about Orthodox dating the right way, traditional Christian dating the right way, than on Valentine's Day. And so that's what I'm going to do now, is give you a few suggestions on rules, guidelines of traditional Christian dating. How's it done and how you can do it too. I want to recommend a fantastic uh, new video. It came out on PragerU's YouTube channel just about a week ago and it's on dating. I'm recommending that uh, uh, you watch it. I am offering you now uh, Father Josiah's 12 suggestions for a uh, good dating life for traditional courtship, okay? So here we go. Number one is the necessity of a spiritual disposition. Uh, if you as a young adult uh, are not yet someone who has appropriated your faith, gone from being a Christian by virtue of being in a Christian family to being a Christian by virtue of choice uh, as a young adult, then don't start dating, please. Because until you have your relationship with Christ set, uh, that we don't really know who you are and no woman or man uh, in your life is going to know who you are. It's very important to first set an adult spiritual disposition. In the name, in the language of scripture, set your relationship, your first love in its place with your heavenly bridegroom and then you can turn your attention to uh, a, a spouse on the earth. That's number one, uh, a spiritual disposition. Number two, Learn how to be around members of the opposite sex in a dignified, mature, chivalrous way. Uh, if we don't know how to interact with members of the opposite sex uh, in church, at school, in work, in a way that's respectful uh, and that is pleasing to God and loving, then we're not going to be able to develop uh, an even more intense, uh, a more a quality relationship with one particular member of the opposite sex. So develop what is appropriate. Learn how to conduct yourself in the presence of a member of the opposite sex, sex with some dignity. Number three, be prepared to do business. Be prepared to do business. Dating is not something you do when you discover the, an interest in the opposite sex. When girls no longer have cooties in the, in the minds of uh, young boys. That doesn't mean that you should start dating. Uh, in fact, we Christians traditionally date in order to get married. And if marriage is not something on the horizon, then dating is a disaster and it's premature. It's a setup for playing married. It's a setup for uh, the compromise of chastity and it's not time yet. Instead, you should take all of your energy and work on getting yourself into a position where you can do business, where you have something to offer another young woman or another young man. So don't start dating until you're ready to do business, which means, of course, that you're ready to get married. And then you can court to wed. And it doesn't have to go on for years. Number four, appreciate the whole ball of wax for marriage. If you want to get married, make sure that you really understand what marriage is, that marriage is about an exclusive uh, fidelity uh, for the rest of your life, that it is about a sacred companionship, uh, that it is about the embrace of children and being open to procreation. And if you're not ready for those things, if you can't pledge exclusive fidelity, if you can't commit yourself to be the primary sacred companion of, of your partner, if you're not open to children, then you're not ready for marriage and you aren't appreciating the whole 
ball of wax. Marriage is not a wax nose that you can just twist. Oh, I'll take parts one and three and leave out part two. No, you take it all or you don't have marriage. Number five, get permission before you start. Get permission before you start. The idea that uh, dating is just a, a matter between two individuals is a novelty and ludicrous. It involves families, uh, it involves the church. Unless you plan on not coming to the church and involving a priest in your wedding, uh, it, as most of you no doubt are expecting to do who are not yet married, remember that you don't just present him a, a package deal done. Families have something to say. Godparents have something to say. Spiritual fathers have something to say. Priests who do the weddings have something to say. Marriage is a very public and communal reality and we ought to treat it that way. So get permission. If you're going to uh, start dating someone and you're a man and you want to date a woman, ask her father. Show some respect that you recognize that she's a part of a family and that how you treat her also is going to impact them. And if you're devout and you are close to your pastor, ask your pastor, ask your spiritual father if he thinks you're ready to do this, if he thinks you're mature, and maybe he'll have something that he wants you to do to get ready. Ask a blessing. Ask a blessing. Number six, state your, for, your intentions formally. Uh, be very clear with what you're doing. You're not just trying to kill time. You're not just looking for a, some, a sexual outlet. Or are you? Right? State your intentions formally. Uh, to uh, your the, per the person that you're hoping to court so that there isn't any confusion about what's going on. Number seven, suggestion number seven, play your role faithfully. There's a role for the man to play. There's a role for the woman to play. And play your role faithfully. Number eight, don't defraud your brother. This is St. Paul's language. It comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where he says that God's will is for us the sanctification of our bodies lest we defraud our brother in the matter. Remember that when you're dating, uh, you don't know if that person you're dating is going to end up being your spouse. You don't know that. And you know when you will know that? You'll know that when you feel the crowns on your head and you hear the priest saying, crown them, O Lord, with glory and honor. Then you'll know. Until then, you don't know. And it's possible that that won't be your spouse. And therefore, don't take what is not yours and what belongs to a person's spouse alone. Don't defraud your brother in the matter. In fact, learn to do what St. Paul said to his spiritual son, St. Timothy. He said, treat the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters, the older men as fathers and the younger men as brothers in all purity. Conduct yourself in that way in courtship. Don't engage in relations with someone that you're courting that you couldn't, uh, an interaction that you couldn't have with your own sister because that's what the person you're courting is to you until she's something more or he's something more. Until you're engaged and then until you're, you're wed, that's all you are. And this way, if you conduct yourselves in this way, not defrauding your brother, then you actually could have a courtship. And if it doesn't work out, no harm, no foul. Nobody's crying. No hearts are broken. There's mutual respect and you can move on. This is the way of wisdom. And this is the way that we've been taught by our forefathers. Number nine, be content, not entertainment oriented in your courtship. Anybody can have a good time at a Lakers game. Anybody could have a nice time at a movie. That doesn't mean that you're meant to be together and you can't know. Instead, focus upon significant things. Go to significant places. Have quality conversations that demand a, an expression of a person's mind and of their inner person and heart. And then you'll find out a ton about each other. Number 10, don't talk together about getting married. This is a big temptation if the courtship's going well. You don't want to start making plans and putting the cart before the horse. What it ends up doing, of course, if you do that and you make all these plans, it makes the asking of the woman's father for permission a rubber stamp. And it's not a rubber stamp. The priests of the church are not allowed canonically to marry anyone with, uh, without the girl's father's explicit blessing. That's very serious uh, in our tradition. And you don't want to cook the whole thing and then just ask him for a rubber stamp. Instead, be wise. Be wise about how you approach it. And you can talk about marriage, but don't talk about it as though you two are married. That's a, a setup for temptation. Number 11, when you think that uh, the person that you're dating may be the one, 
and you start to think seriously about a life together, that's the important time to ask the opinion of those people in your life who are very important to you. Your mom, your dad, your spiritual father, your brother, your sister, whatever. Make sure that uh, you, you get counsel and you ask other people's opinions about uh, your match. And lastly, number 12, uh, this comes from uh, the great elder Emilianos of Simenopetra. He says, when you begin to date, hold on to your hearts with two hands and don't let go. Hold on to your heart with two hands and don't let go because the heart is wily. And uh, if you're not holding on tight, you can end up in a place you never intended to be. So hold on tight uh, with both hands and go down the courtship path wisely. And if you happen to be in Southern California tomorrow night, or if you're watching this on Friday, uh, Valentine's Day itself, Come on over to St. Andrews. We have a wonderful uh, singles mixer. It's called the Love Connection. We have uh, over 100 young people registered and hopefully some more coming. We're going to have some fi very fine dancing and uh, a great time together uh, in the context of the church and with people who have the same mutual love. God be with you. Thank you for watching this video. Do you know that PNP is recording the lives of the saints for every day of the year? It's a massive project and we're halfway done and we need donors to help us complete the project. Would you consider making a donation on our website today? Thank you, and God be with you.